Oliver Pichuan Luthier here, <clears throat> and today um, we're going to talk about installing the nut. So I have made this um, nut here and um, cut it and cut it to shape. I've rounded this one side, and I've got the length right, the thickness right, and the height is a little tall probably at this point, which is fine because I can always take it down on the top a little bit later or um, off the bottom, but I'd rather have a little extra than not having enough. So I've marked it here, a uh, center point, and then I've marked um, these uh, where the slots go, and they're three-eighths of an inch apart on this tenor ukulele. So that'll give us the string spacing, spacing that we want. So I'm going to just set this here now that I've cut it so it fits in that groove and it fits really nice and tight. I really like having it so that it's trapped between the headstock veneer and the fretboard. So we're going to start cutting these for these strings. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have the right size file for the right string. So if we're going to start with this G, this is a low G string, it's a Fremont squeakless low G. So what I'm going to do is measure it to see how thick the string is. And I can see here that it's uh, 28 thousandths of an inch thick. So I have a file that's also 28 thousandths of an inch here. And this is a little diamond file. It's, it's, um, it's got grit basically on the edges rather than on the flats of, of it. So <clears throat> when we file this slot, we know that this first string is going to be wound to the outside. So the outside strings wind to the outside of the little hole that the strings go through, and the inside strings wind to the inside. So that's really easy to remember. Out to out, in to in. So when we're going to file this, I have it right there on the mark that I made. And I know that this one's going to the outside, so I'm going to aim my file right towards that area, which is just to the outside of that hole. And so I'm going to just do some nice strokes here, aiming it that way. Start out with a slight incline, maybe of about 10 degrees incline on this. Take a couple of strokes, and then I'm going to angle it down so that it's more at the 11 degree angle that the headstock is to the fretboard. I do that first stroke more level just to make sure that I'm in the right place. And then I'm going to angle it down even more so it's actually aiming at that at that uh, tuning peg. These diamond files cut pretty fast so I'm going to have that one right there, and then we take the string, and we can place it in the slot. This one's kind of in the way, so I'm just going to set it over here on this other side for now. There, I just set it over there. They're very loose. Uh, they're tight enough to have some tension, but so that's sitting now in the slot. Now, how do we know how deep to cut the slot? The way we do that is we press down here on the third fret so that the string is touching the third fret. And we want to have a, a distance of about the thickness of a cigarette paper between the string and the fret. So when we push down, we want just a little bit of space in there. So if I was to measure that space, um, I would say it's probably going to be, oh, probably right around, you know, um, eight thousandths. So if I have a feeler gauge, I can put it in here and come in and see eight thousandths. And, and I, I have, there's still a lot of space. So we can take that one down just a little bit more. These are, you can get files that are, that are just the more traditional toothed files than these diamond files. Um, they look like this. 
here's some of those they so that you can see what they look like <clears throat> and this this is a just it has just regular teeth on it on the edge nothing on the sides at all so these are good files too and uh, I, I like these as well these cut a little bit uh, on the side as well as the as the in the bottom of the groove and sometimes I prefer these for the final for the final work so Anyway, that's what those files look like. Don't ever try to do this with any other kind of file or saw blade because it won't uh, give you a good result. We want the string to really contact the, the area of the nut that's right on this edge. The nut is basically acting as a fret. And as we've had to crown the frets, we also want to have that same high point right there at the front of this of the nut. So we'll come in, we're going to take it down a little bit more. So I'm actually putting the bevel on this as if it was a fret towards the side of the headstock. So I'm really not taking much off at all if you can see the dust there on this face. It's mostly coming off that back side. So there are several angles here that we're dealing with. We're dealing with an angle this way, which is aiming towards the right place on the peg head, and we're also aiming with an angle up and down this way. So, and we'll have, um, so here we, we're just going to do just a little bit more on this to make sure that we get it to where we want it. And then I'm going to lower that down just slightly like that. Okay, let's see what we have there. These diamond files, you have to be very careful because they really cut fast. And it's really easy to overdo it. So we put that string on there and we get down and press here and press and that's actually getting pretty close right there, right now on that string. So I'm going to do some of the others and then we'll come back and fine tune it. I have over here um, a, a temporary um, saddle. Let me see if I can show you that. Okay, so here this is a temporary saddle that I have put in here uh, just for the time being because we'll need to adjust that to to uh, raise or lower the action on it. But for now we're just doing this this here with the with the nut. So on this next string which is the C um, Let's see, I'm going to need a little more tension on it than that. So actually this gives me an opportunity. I'm going to put this string on over again so that you can see how the, the correct knot on a slotted head is to put the string in there. So the easiest way to do this is to have the, the, the slot uh, parallel to the headstock. And then you can just slide the make sure you're not underneath another string there. You can slide this through the hole and then come up through the top like this. And with a slotted head and, and these nylon strings or um, nail gut strings, you can, you can um, have it so that there's not a lot of extra. You just, just have it so it's just in there like this. And then what we're going to do is know that the outside goes to the outside and the inside goes to the inside. So on this one, what we're going to do is because this is going to wind towards the middle, we're going to put the string underneath here towards the center like this. And then we're going to just snug it up a little bit. And then we are going to just turn this. And as you can see, what's happening is, is that the string is coming across and now we're getting into an area where it's sort of flat on the um, on the, the um, area on the peg away from the hole. And when we're sort of in the middle of that area between that area where there is no hole, then we can pull this around like this and we'll continue winding it. And it'll go over the top of that. And that really holds it. So that'll, that'll be good just like that. For now, that's plenty tight enough for what we're going to do. 
So you do the same thing on these, except instead of going underneath towards the center, you go from the center towards the outside, because then that way the string will wind towards the outside on these outside strings, and it'll wind, the, the winds will be going towards the center on the, uh, on the two middle strings. So once again, we're going to measure that string and see how thick it is. They tell you on the package, but I always look and, and see. So this one is saying that, I'm making sure I'm on zero there, and then I come in and I look in here and I say, okay, so this one's 33 thousandths. So, and if I look on the package, it says that it's 34 thousandths. Well, I don't have a file that's 33 thousandths, but I do have one um, that's 32 thousandths. And let's see, in these, I have one that's a 28 thousandths, and yeah, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the 32 thousandths um, file, and we're going to, which is just a thousandths short, right? It's supposed to be 33 thousandths, and then we can widen it slightly by just um, pushing the file back and forth. So now on this one, we have our mark right there, so I'm going to set it right on there where the mark is. And how did I make that mark? What, what I did, just to go back and show you how I did that, is I put the ruler, my, my ruler in here, and I get the center point. So I know that at 22 thousandths, uh, 22, six, uh, 30 seconds actually on either side, that gives me zero. And then if I go to 3 sixteenths or 6 30 seconds, either side of that zero, that gives me my first mark, and then 18, um, 30 seconds or 9 sixteenths uh, over gives me the the next mark over on both sides. So that's how I get those marks. And then I mark them with a pencil and then I take a little, very fine little three-cornered file just to make a little teeny groove where that is. And then that way I know that when I come in here with this file, it holds it in place. So that's right there. Now these are going towards the inside. So I'm going to aim this right there towards the inside of that. So that's going to be the angle going that direction. So we're going to file across here and just go very gently here. Okay. And let's see. Before I get any deeper, I want to make sure that my, my cut is in the right place. It's always good to do that. It takes a fair amount of, and it's right on there. That's right where I want it. So it takes a fair amount of effort to make this nut out of just a piece of raw bone. And I use uh, um, raw bone rather than bleached bone, natural bone, because it's stronger. When they bleach it, it kind of weakens the bone. So I'm aiming towards that spot. It's going across at an angle. angling it down so it's going at the 11 degree angle of the headstock and then a little bit more being very careful that I don't file the wood on the headstock veneer and we'll come in here with this string set it in there like that so that's where that string is going to go and if we press down here and then we can see how much space we have between the string and the fret, and it needs to go down a little bit more. <clears throat> but at least at this point, I have it where it goes, and I'm liking the way they're lining up on the on the headstock. That's really, I mean, on the uh, fingerboard. That's really nice. So now let's just give it a little bit more. And I'm also when I'm filing this, knowing that the string is slightly thicker, it will get thinner when we stretch it very slightly. So that's something that we just definitely want to watch. So we're going to come in here. There's our angle looking right there. And we're coming across. Take your time doing this. You don't want to have to remake a whole nut. And I'm just kind of going sideways a little bit on this to make like this to make sure the slot is a little bit wider than for the then the um, file is making it for the string 
in there. Yeah, that fits in there really nice. So let's come in here and we'll look. And we're getting close. We can need a little bit more, but that's uh, we'll do that later. We can move on to this next string, which is going to be right in that spot. You can see that there's not a, really even enough to hold it. <clears throat> and we'll just measure this string. I always measure strings. I don't trust them. This one's 28 thousandths. So we'll come in. We do have our 28 thousandths file. So we're going to come in here. This one's also going to be aiming right towards that spot right there. So that's our that's our, our uh, goal is to get right on that spot right there. We can check ourselves to make sure we're on. When you're working with bone, making the making the nut in the saddle, it's important to wear a mask because the the dust from the bone, if you're sanding it and doing things like that, is quite toxic and hard on your lungs. So, uh, really good idea to to use some kind of protection when you're doing that. So there we are. Boy, that is just right exactly where it needs to be. Just exactly. So we're going to continue filing that one. Make sure we have the right file. I have several of them laying out here, so I just don't want to grab the wrong one. That would not be good. So we're going to come in here and we're going to file this a little bit more. There's our 11 degrees, <clears throat> which is, I know the headstock's 11 degrees to the uh, fretboard, so <clears throat> all I have to do is go parallel to this to know that I have that 11 degrees. It's an interesting phenomena that Everybody seems to want low action on an instrument, but one of the issues with having the action too low <clears throat> is that if your action is too low, it actually kills the sound. So that is something you really want to avoid doing. So anyway, we're going to just continue doing this through the strings. I'm going to come back, <clears throat> press down, and just make sure that their string is just barely above. So. One thing you do want to watch is, is that these two strings here need to be slightly higher above that <clears throat> fret than these two because they're not as tight. Because these strings are <clears throat> actually stretched tighter, they have a tendency to not buzz as much. But the strings that are looser when you strum them, they have a wider range of vibration and they can buzz if they're too low. So you have to be careful that you don't get your nut cut too low. Um, <clears throat> after we get all this in there, get them cut properly, I'm going to come in and I can show you what I do on this one right here just to make sure. <clears throat> when you're tuning your guitar for the first time, especially with these like Aquila Reds, some people um, complain that the string breaks when they tighten it up. There are two reasons for that. One is, is that the edges are sharp. The edges are sharp on the edge of the nut. So the, the, when they're sharp like that and you tighten it, it's actually cutting the string. So Aquila recommends that what you do is you do your most of your tuning with the string, not in the slot, but just to one side of the slot, and then you can move it into the slot. But I find that if you take just a small piece of, I've got this, uh, Mitchell's abrasive cord and what it is is it's a string that has like um, a an abrasive uh, action to it and that we can come into the, our slot like this and we can just basically sand the edges of it a little bit like this just to make sure that it's really smooth and then that way there won't be any issues with the nut um, 
cutting the string. If this has been useful to you and you enjoyed it, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, give it a like, and uh, I'll see you next time.